Uh, so hello all, welcome to Excel Academy. So we are having another uh, problem today based on model analysis, but this problem is quite different from all others. Why? Because uh, this is what I say the basic diagram. So if you get a, a question based on this kind of diagram, so it is really easier for you to solve without fail. But if you get a diagram based on what we did in day before yesterday's class, then it would be uh, somewhat quite difficult to understand or uh, to identify the node. So that is why I try to uh, learn different different types of problems also. Fine. Mesh you can easily identify. Mesh is not a matter to you. Uh, the This is one mesh. This is one mesh. This is one mesh. You can identify easily a mesh. But node is the one wherein your um, principal node I can say. Because in all these things three elements meet together at a single point so that is why i consider as a principal node because in node only one or more element but in principal node it is two or more element that is why i can tell it as principal node fine but you can also tell it as node without fail okay so that is why i'm telling you to see more and more different different types of problems in node because if you get any different type of diagram other than this diagram what i'm showing it to you now so then uh, it would be difficult so that is why I try to work it on that also fine and here this diagram is something different why something different you have a capacitance you have an inductance fine yes so you this is a complex problem so in complex that is day problems only you will be having an inductance and capacitance so this is not your super node analysis we have not come to super node analysis yet we are not into that topic now so we are trying to do these types of problems from today fine these types of problem we are going to do i'm going to take some two to three problems i'm going to do and then let me come to super nodal analysis and we'll wind up nodal analysis and then we'll move on to other what i can say the topic okay so examination related problems that is what that comes for an exam question paper that came already for an exam question paper so those kinds of questions i'm planning to uh, solve it and i'm going to explain it to you uh, that will take another day because uh, let me do all the other problems here and examination problems and make a separate video i don't want to mix it with this because uh, so i'm going to do here all the possible problems that will come for an exams so or that might because will in the sense some will all some will come for exams and some will not we don't know what comes and what not that uh, what not uh, will come for exam because it is not in our hands it is in the hands of your uh, question paper setter who sets the question right so you 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 only know that you will get a question from mesh analysis and nodal analysis uh, and you will get a question from those theorems right what topic you get the question you know but how the question from comes from the topic we don't know that is why i told you um, uh, might right uh, i have already done with respect to important uh, concepts uh, what i can say with respect to circuits and control so controls we were doing with module one uh sorry module three i'm so sorry and uh, i just uh, stopped it for now because uh, yeah circuits is very important now because uh, they'll start with circuits only in your colleges and you know uh, you will be having circuit concepts for your uh, internals, first internals I say. That is why I am trying to complete at least some part of circuits so that it will be helpful for you. So that is why I am doing circuits and DSP for now. So I will take up controls in the upcoming classes because in the upcoming classes for second internals you might, uh, your controls will get added. So that is why I will take at that point of time. Fine. Okay. So now I have told there already that how the question paper comes for an exam with respect to circuits. I told you in our paper actually uh, we had a uh, network theorem and uh, this particular topic as a separate model. So we had uh, what I can say the source transformation technique star to delta and we had mesh and nodal analysis as one module and network theorem separately as another module. But now it is not like that for you people. For you people your network theorem as well as uh, mesh and nodal analysis are clubbed together. So that is why I can tell that uh, chances of getting mesh and nodal analysis question together is really less. If you get it, it is your what I can say the other uh, one that is it's your luck, right? So that is what I told you. What I told you in the class, I also told you that if you have two chapters, I'll write it over here. 
please do see students if you have two chapters and uh, if we consider uh, question number one uh, for you question number one and two is module one right yes if he considers question number one and uh, uh, if he thinks that let me give only questions from chapter one and the question number one that is this is two chapters from module one right you have module one you have what two chapters one is what one is your uh, what i can say the, this one that is your uh, elements different types of elements your nodal analysis and mesh analysis and uh, ac independent and uh, dependent sources fine that is what your first chapter so if the evaluator tries to uh, think if the evaluator makes his mind that or you're not sorry evaluator i'm sorry uh, it is the question paper setter if the question paper setter is trying to make a mindset that let me give uh, what i can say the uh, uh, questions uh, in the first question let me give the first question from chapter number one itself that is uh, he'll try to uh, what I can say, consider only chapter 1 for question number 1 and he is going to give it. And in the question number 2, he will only consider chapter 2 and give chapter 2 questions and he won't consider chapter 1 questions for question number 2. If that is going to happen, then like uh, for uh, question number 1, it is only full chapter 1 questions. Chapter 2 questions will not come into existence at all. And in the case of uh, module uh, question number 2, it is chapter 2. That is chapter 2, that is network theorem and he won't consider chapter number 1 questions in question number 2. So if that is going to happen, then you can expect in the question number 1, that is nodal analysis and mesh analysis combination, right? You won't expect nodal analysis and mesh analysis combination simply. If this is the case only, you will expect. If he thinks that let me give question uh, in the question number one, let me give only chapter number one question that is mesh analysis, nodal analysis, active element type uh, types of elements that if he is considering for question number one and if he thinks that let me not add any question from chapter number two that is any question from uh, network uh, what I can say theorem questions, uh, network theorem, any questions from network theorem then your combination of mesh and nodal analysis will come into existence. Right here, your combinations of uh, network theory will come into existence. If we we'll not do that, if he thinks that, let me give the combination of chapter one and chapter two in both question number one and two. So if that is going to happen, I am repeating once again. If he tries to consider uh, that, uh, let me give combination of chapter one and chapter two in both the question number one and two, then you might get a combination of mesh analysis with one. Uh, theorem one network theorem question or nodal analysis uh, with one network theorem question or uh, that that's all only combination will happen right that is why try to analyze different types of combinations we don't know what combinations will come for exam see these are all the condition uh, these are all not the conditions it is like these are all the possibilities that is tend to happen and that is uh, left to the question paper setter because question paper setter he'll only think that it is his thinking and he'll only give. That is why I try to understand how the question paper setter will think and how he can give the questions and try to work it on that, right? Don't go with the question paper for this combination thing. For this combination thing, don't go with the question paper. So, I guess circuits and controls, I guess I did not get the model question paper. If so, if he releases model question paper, you can just check with that. Sometimes model question paper... Uh, pattern will only get followed so that is why uh, try to if you get any qu model question paper list by video for circuits and control check it out how he has given the combination see according to that you can also work without it fine but for combination thing don't go with the question paper don't see with the question paper that mesh and nodal analysis combination has come i'll only work on that no you have to work on different different combinations if he gives one mesh analysis question along with one network theorem question then you will lose marks because you might have not studied network theorem question and you have only fixed on mesh and nodal analysis combination right so that is why don't do that just try to analyze the combinations what i told you now and try to work on that without fail that is why i'm telling you because don't get stuck for combination try to look at what are the questions that come for exams but uh, but don't look into how how what type of questions that come for exams that is not in our hands we only know on what con in which concept he'll give the questions for exams but we don't know how the question comes for this problematic subject right and even what are the combinations of questions that come 
so we also don't know but we can somewhat predict and expect that is why try to understand all these things and try to work it on this without pain i'm telling you all this is for your good only right yes so try to analyze the combinations and try to work it on right combination analyzation is really important factor if you try to analyze the combinations and work it on question combinations and work it on so it is easier to uh, what i can say um easier exams right that you can predict you can predict on uh, what topic the question comes for exams by seeing the question paper you can predict the combination of questions if you have two chapters you can uh, predict the combination of questions for an exams but you can't predict how the questions that come for a problematic subject so please try to um understand that and try to work on that without fail fine for more details you can check with respect to circuits and controls important questions that i have released i'll uh, put the uh, link in the description box below so that it will be really helpful for you students right yes okay and uh, now coming on to the uh, this particular problem so you can see here this is a uh, 10 at an angle of 30 volt and this is 6 ohm and this is minus j 10 ohm this is j 5 ohm and this is what is a capacitor this is a resistor and inductor and here is your once again a voltage fine so here according to the arrow mark only you are supposed to go so here is negative and positive and uh, negative and positive fine yes so now he hasn't given uh, mark the currents over here fine currents aren't marked over here so try to understand if currents aren't marked over here let us go according to the given arrow mark fine my arrow mark is going up so if my arrow mark is going up then i have to come here then once again i have to come down and once again i have to go here come down and once again i have to come from here right uh, here once again i have to go down why go down because the arrow mark is coming down fine yes that is right okay so now here so what i'm supposed to do is that here i'm not going to take according to my agenda my agenda was algebraic sum of all the currents entering the node is equal to algebraic sum of all the currents leaving the node right but i'm not going according to that what i'm going to do is that i am going to what i can say follow the other thing what is that other thing is algebraic sum of all the currents entering and leaving the node is equal to zero i'm going to use that technique for it i'm going to equate algebraic sum of all the currents that is entering and leaving the node and i'm equating it to zero i'm clubbing it together and i'm equating it to zero fine yes let me do that so let me uh, first analyze the node so see here this is node see here this one this one and this one what i'm highlighting it in black color you can see right the, this particular one this particular one and this particular one all are meeting at a point that is v1 and here you can see this particular point this particular point and this particular point all are this one this one this 4 ohm and this 3 ohm they're all meeting at a point that is what i call it as v2 so your node will be somewhat like this right here all the three elements this is one two and three all are meeting at a point so this is how my node looks right for this particular what i can say this particular diagram okay yes so now let me start with my original process so let me apply what i'll apply kci2 node v1 fine if i apply kci to node v1 so what is that going to happen the start so just a minute students i'm so sorry so you have this v1 minus or i can say 10 at an angle of 30 fine it is minus 10 at an angle of 30 volt that is uh, divided by 6 right so i'm going to write that so it is v1 minus what i can say this term it right this v1 
minus 10 at an angle of 30 divided by 6. Right? Yes. So now once again it is plus P1 divided by minus 10 10 ohm. Fine. Because this is a leaving current so I am taking P1 divided by minus J 10 ohm. It is like we are taking all the components uh, what I can say here uh, and including in the nodal analysis right. So this nodal analysis equation we are including all the components right. There in mesh analysis you have to just look at the what I can say the um, this one sign convention with respect to uh, sign convention with respect to each and every component that is for resistance for a voltage for your capacitance and inductance you are supposed to look at the sign conventions positive to negative negative to positive all those but here it is not you can take this directly it is i is equal to v by r you can take this directly here no sign convention come into existence fine yes so it is uh, v1 by minus j 10 ohm fine and once again it is plus so see here this is my inductance which is lying between two nodes. So that is why I take my first node B1. That is my very first node B1. What I can say it is uh, uh, the node which we are considering for now. Right. For now we are considering node B1. So that is why it is B1 minus B2 by J5 ohm. Fine. Which is equal to 0. Yes, so now here, so here we are going to simplify this and if we simplify this particular, if we uh, take V1 as common and equate all these three, that is 6 minus J10 and J5 and if we do the process, total process, so I would be getting my resultant task that is equal to V1 into, that is 1 by 6 plus 1 by minus j10 ohm plus uh, v1 by j5 ohm um yes i'm sorry it is 1 by okay and it is minus v2 by 1 by j5 ohm which is, is equal to 10 at an angle of 30 degrees divided by what I can say 6. Fine? Yes. So now let me try to solve this one. So if I try to solve this one, I mean students, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so it is coming till that. So Okay. So now here see we are supposed to what I can say take what so that is 1 by 6 plus of ma plus that is uh, 1 by minus uh, j10 ohm plus 1 by j5 ohm you are going to take it in your calculator fine let me uh, take that in the calculator and write the resultant so what I supposed to do in the calculator is that uh, yeah I want this okay uh, what I supposed to just a minute students, so sorry, yes. What you are supposed to do in the calculator is that you are going to just substitute this particular thing directly. That is 1 by 6 plus, uh, uh, plus 1 by minus J10 ohm plus 1 by J5 ohm. Don't worry, you are going to get the resultant if you even substitute directly. Fine, yes. So now if I do that in the calculator, I am going to showcase it to you. See here. So it is is equal to 1 by 6 plus 1 by minus 10 J I to sign the calculator plus 1 divided by J5 fine of 5J. Okay. So what is uh, so you are going to get a resultant task that is a uh, 0 0.1666 uh, continuation and here it is 7 minus 0 0.19 so here what I am going to take is you are going to take 0 0.166 minus 0 0.19 fine okay and uh, I am showcasing it to you because this is a complete package of calculator along with the 
uh, equation fine so this is a complete packet like i'm also going to showcase you the calculator and i'm also going to substitute things in the calculator and showcase it to you fine see you can directly substitute without fail and don't waste your time by uh, uh, typing 1 by 6 in the calculator getting the result and and 1 by minus 10 i substituting it in the calculator getting the result and and uh, 1 by 5 i substituting in the calculator getting the result and, and adding all the three don't go to that you can uh, just uh, substitute this directly and we, even when you substitute directly or even when you do separately for both the cases you get the same result and fine that is why i'm going to i'm showcasing it to you fine yes so let me write the result and i'm sorry So now my resultant. So a uh, minute. Okay. So my resultant is equal to what? My resultant is equal to. So that is what I can say. My uh, zero point one six six minus zero point one i v one plus. So I have one by j five o. So what is 1 by j5? Can you see here it is 1 by j5 and what is 1 by j5? What is 1 by 5? 0.25. So I am going to get it as, I guess you can see the upward part. Okay. So just a minute students, I will just start writing from here itself. Okay. So it is what I can say my 0 0.166 minus uh, 0 0.1 V1. I, it is I, I forgot to write. Wait a minute students. Yes. 0.1 i v1 and it is what I can say uh, plus it is 0 0.2 i so it is you here, here have to write it as j as it is j okay it is j and uh, 2j it is what I can say my v2 right v2 it is minus okay minus and uh, what I can say which is, is equal to, so this is you can see here students, it is 10 at an angle of 30 degree by 6. So 10 at an angle of 30 degree is that. So what you are going to do for uh, 10 at an angle of 30 is that. So I'm um, students here, I guess your calculator is clear for you. So here take this division 1 take 10 here fine you took 10 right angle is where angle is over here see on the top of subtraction there is an angle symbol so take shift can you see shift button angle right you got it so here is my angle see you can see just a minute here yeah. here is my I'm a student sorry yeah okay here is my angle in the in the subtraction on the top of subtraction here is my angle inside the bracket right for that i'm going to put shift and plus this particular okay so it is 10 at an angle of 30 so i'll take 30 here okay 10 at an angle of 30 divided by 6 and please do take it in degrees not radians fine what is degree here uh, what i can say my uh, angle unit should be in degrees see here you can see your angle unit is in degrees right so see here it is D, right? This angle unit, you should take it in degrees. So, I am going to tell you how you take that. Fine. See? You are going to get it. I am um, sorry. Okay. I am sorry. Just a minute. Yeah. So, it is equal to what? So, it is equal to 1.4433. Just a minute. Huh. 1.4433 plus 0.833i fine you're going to take up to three or four values after point fine okay and this is what is the result in. and if you want to take what i can say your uh, this particular uh, degrees go to uh, shift shift button press shift button students go to mode and here you have degree and radian so press three so if you press number three you are going to get it in degrees. Fine. You got it. Go to shift. Go to mode. Number 3. Degrees. So try to press number 3. Fine. 
if you press number 3 now it is in degrees right so you are going to get the resultant as so that is resultant see resultant will be is equal to this that is 1.4433 that is plus 0 0.833i right yes so now I will write that resultant over there so which is, is equal to why I am showcasing all this to you is because you need to understand each and every simple things fine with respect to j that is why okay yes so which is, is equal to what I can say my 1.4433 minus 0.833j fine so this is what is my equation number 1. Right. This is what is my what? This is what is my equation number 1. Fine. Yes. So now coming on to my equation number 2. So equation number 2 what I am supposed to do? Apply. Apply KCL to node V2. So according to my node B2, so according to my node B2, just a minute, oh yeah. according to my node B2, so what's that going to happen? So it is V2 minus V1 by J5. Why V2 minus V1 by J5? It is because uh, you are considering the node V2, you are considering node V2, so therefore that is why which node we are considering, let us take that node only first. Fine? Yes. So, as my inductance is between the two nodes, so which node we are considering first, we are going to take that particular uh, node and then we are going to subtract with the other node wherein your resist, uh, inductance is present. Fine? Here, my uh, V2 is very first thing. We are taking apply uh, KCL to node V2. So, therefore, we are going to take it as V2 here and then uh, minus V1 by J5 ohm. And here it is V2 divided by 3 plus J8. See here, if there is any uh, uh, J term, any uh, real term. So, this is 3 ohm is what I can say. My real term, just a minute, it is R. Okay, yes. So, this is my real term and this is my imaginary term. So, what I am supposed to do? I have to take first my real term and add with imaginary term. That is, if you have a combination of any real term and imaginary term, what I am supposed to do? You are supposed to take a real term plus imaginary term. So, that is why I take it as 3 ohm plus J8 ohm. Fine? Yes, 3 plus J8 ohm. Fine? Okay. So, now 3 plus J8 ohm. And then it is plus, once again it is plus, so this V2, so this is plus and minus. This is higher potential positive and this is negative. So once again you get it as positive and V2 plus uh, what I can say my phi at an angle of minus 30 divided by 4. You got it? This is V2 minus V1 by J5. This is V2 by 3 plus J8. By 3 plus J8, I told you, it is real and imaginary combination. If you get, you are going to add that real plus imaginary. And here it is why V2 at the beginning because you are considering node V2. That is why V2 first node V2 and then subtracted with the other node wherein this in, uh, inductance is present and we divided it by 5. Fine. And then here this is V2. Ma, this is plus uh, phi at an angle of minus 30 degree divided by 4. Okay. So, let me write that students. Yes. Uh, wait a second. So, yes. Okay. So, it is first thing. That's what I can say. My V2 minus V1 by how much? V2 minus V1 by J5. What I can say uh, my um, plus what? It is V2 divided by uh, 3 plus J8 plus uh, V2 what I can say plus what I can say my 
5 at an angle of minus 30 degree. Just a minute, students. I'm sorry. So I am following a rule set that is uh, this particular that is algebraic sum of all the currents entering and leaving the node is uh, what I can entering and leaving the node. So that is algebraic sum of all the currents that is entering and leaving the node which is equal to what I can say my 0. So that uh, thing I am taking into consideration and I am solving it fine. So now if I try to simplify this and equate or uh, take like this V2 common and do all those things. So I will be getting as what? I will be getting it as that as V2. One by five plus one by three plus J8. Plus what I can say that is your uh, one by four. Um, this term in a student, so I'm really sorry uh, for the distraction that is happening here. Wait a second. Okay, so here is the uh, result and so this is V2 divided V2 into this uh, thing minus V1 by J5 which is equal to minus Y at an angle of uh, minus 30 degree divided by 4, right? So now here, so we are going to simplify this part, this part and this part and get the result in. So fine, uh, what is supposed to do is that. So that is why just a minute we will do it and get the result in. Uh, so yes students, uh, so we have uh, completed the process and the result is this. So this is a minus 0.2 J V1 that is first you're considering V1. You're going to write it in an order and this result in that is 0 0.2910 minus 0 0.3095. Uh, so that result in I'm a student. So sorry for the distraction. So here you can see this resultant is for this particular and this resultant is for this particular. Fine. For this particular, many people will do a mistake. Fine. Many people, what they'll do is that I'll showcase to you in the calculator. I guess your calculator is not possible. A minute. Okay. So now here many people, what they'll do is that they'll try to take subtraction before 5. They will not take it. What they will do is they will take uh, just a minute. They will take here. They will take the subtraction. Fine. Where is the subtraction? It is before 5. If they try to take before 5 subtraction, you will get math error. Don't do that. That is wrong. So what you are supposed to do then? You are going to remove subtraction symbol before minus 5 and you are going to put it down here. Here you are going to put your subtraction. You can see right. Just a minute, I am going to showcase to you like this. Here you are going to put your subtraction that is minus and you are going to take this division, whole thing, fine. That is what you are supposed to do. Then if you do like this, you are going to get your what resultant. So what is the resultant? So see you got your resultant, right? Yes. So that is why try to do that. Don't make a mistake, fine? Yes. So now coming back to the Kramer's rule. So coming back to the Kramer's rule, so I'm going to, what I'm supposed to do is, I'm going to uh, do the Kramer's rule and write the result and now and I'm going to explain it to you in a clear manner. As I have done Kramer's rule already, so I'm planning to, uh, what I can say, uh, do all the process and explain it to you clearly. And please do uh, wait for a minute students, so I'm going to do all the process and I'm going to explain it to you clearly okay and please do try to like share and subscribe and watch all the videos because all the videos we are only working for vto not for any other any
any other if you have this kind of thing i'm telling you one more thing so many people feel that this is only for video not for other universities mm -hmm. let me tell you i don't know the syllabus of other university uh, but if any other university but i know that other universities are having these subjects network or uh, digital or what i can say this um what i can say control system and your uh, this one which one um this thing uh, signals and system all those things i know that many other universities also having that so if any universities is having those uh, topics and if you have these kinds of problems also please do try to watch our videos without fail because it is you that you can distinguish right uh, one people who's in uh, any other university they know that syllabus and if you have all these topics for a syllabus please do watch our channel and like share and subscribe and share it to other people of your university also so that it would be helpful for you and i just uh, do the complete video and explain it to you i'll just write the complete thing and explain it to you now students uh, so yes yeah, students uh, we are back with the uh, kramer's rule and here uh, you can uh, see uh, this is what is our Kramer's rule. So we have to first, I guess you can see the other side. Just a minute, I'll just push it. So this much is required. Uh, so here you can see this is what is, what we got an equation. That is we got uh, what I can say uh, this one. That is this into V1 and this uh, into V2 which is equal to this one. And this V1 and this V2 we got is equal to this one. So that we have written like this. So in the case of what I can say your Kramer's uh, uh, rule with respect to loop analysis. So here you can see this was I1 and I2. But now here it is V1 and V2. Because this is these uh, getting multiplied to V1 and V2 respectively. But in the case of uh, loop analysis this was getting multiplied to I1 and I2 students. That is why. We were writing here as I1 and I2, fine. But here it is V1 and V2, okay. Yes, so now coming on to this, so we have already done this, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, as per Kramer's rule requirement. So see here, as per Kramer's rule requirement, we have done all these things, okay. So now here, where we are supposed to find delta. So how to find delta? So before that, please do note on that these are the values of V1 and V2 and this is values after equal to. Fine? Yes. And uh, how to find delta is that we are going to multiply this into this minus this into this. Fine? Yes. So while multiplying this, so I have written a multiplication symbol over here. But what are you supposed to do? You are not supposed to put that in calculator. This multiplication symbol is completely, uh, you should not use it in calculator. You have to write like this, right? This is what is you're supposed to do. You're supposed to take brackets and you're going to multiply like this. So this, this whole thing, you're going to take it in brackets and this whole thing, you're going to take it in brackets. However, I have written over here, see? However, uh, I'll show you here. However, I've written over here, these two try to substitute like this only. Like this one, you're supposed to substitute. So this one, minus this one so this whole thing you're going to take it in brackets fine so if you take it in brackets so then it would be easier here there is no requirement of brackets no requirement uh, you can omit the bracket you can just completely uh, take minus 0.2 j into minus 0.2 j what i can say in the calculator you can omit bracket over here bracket does not required so why i have written brackets here is because i'll tell you that also so i am telling you to omit bracket only during calculation time that is you can just directly calculate uh, what i can say minus 0.2 into uh, minus 0.2 in the calculator you can directly write it that is i am telling you that you can directly uh, put minus 0.2 j into minus 0.2 j in the calculator but why i am taking this bracket is because the result that you get in for minus 0.2 j into minus 0.2 j is minus 0.04 result in here i'll write it over here it is minus 0.04 that you are going to get so this minus 0.04 into this minus will become plus 0.04. What? This minus 0.2j into minus 0.2j is yielding me 0.04. And this minus 0.04 into this minus is yielding me plus 0.04. So for that reason I have put bracket. Because if you get any uh, negative values that negative has to be multiplied to this. That is why I have used brackets here while writing. 
but while calculating you can just uh, have minus 0.2 j into minus 0.2 j directly no need of brackets right if you use brackets also you get the same result no issues fine and this is what is the resultant that you get while multiplying this this particular thing you are going to use brackets only however i have written here see this same thing like this only you have to substitute in calculator right i can't show all this uh, like this only you can try to substitute in the calculator first you have to take a bracket substitute uh, 0 0.1666 minus 0 0.1j and here it is 0 0.29110 minus 0 0.3095 all this should be in the brackets okay uh, just a minute students um, so sorry for the distraction okay so like that is supposed to do and the resultant you are going to get this for this is this resultant and for this particular is this resultant so if you add all these things if you do uh, the addition and subtraction of all these things you are going to get this resultant so this resultant is my delta fine i guess you got how to do delta that is this into this minus minus this into this this into this minus this into this fine okay so you can write like this this into this so whole minus this into this you can write like this fine okay this into this minus this into this okay so like that is supposed to do okay so why i am uh, i've written all these things and i'm uh, telling it to use because i have already done with respect to this particular or uh, two variable came up and three variable came up <coughs> what i can say the kramer's rule so the same process what i can say will come into existence for all the kramer's rule will not change at all only the here the values whatever you see you know these values will change that's it the kramer's rule is the same fine kramer's rule won't change at all the kramer's rule is the same the values here the values what you substituted here and here it will uh, vary so for that purpose i have uh, uh, done all these things and i'm showcasing it to you fine yes and uh, yeah okay um, just a moment. and for your exams you're going to write this without fail fine for your exams you're going to write this without fail because for your exams he expect kramer's rule because if he has asked any question for 10 marks or 8 marks uh, like that so then you are supposed to write the kramer's rule because uh, if you try to uh, write the equation and simplify the equation for your world uh, for your kcl and kvl i'm telling for both because for both kcl and kvl that is for both loop analysis and nodal analysis you will follow the kramer's rule only at the end after you get the equations fine so even if you take the kvl for any mesh or kcl for any node if you write that uh, kcl and kvl equation and if you simplify and write that also it will only yield you five marks fine what i'm trying to tell us so you take a, a what i can say kvl for one mesh you will write the particular equation for that after writing the particular equation so then what is supposed to do what is supposed to do you are going to just what i can say um, um uh, what i can say take the other uh, one i'm going to write it in upward so you will take a kvl for one equation fine you will take a kvl for one mesh and after taking the kvl for that mesh what you're supposed to do is that you're going to simplify that equation if required right simplify that equation if required it's in the sense for the simplification that is if you have 4 into i1 minus i2 for example in the equation right in the equation very first equation that you take when you apply kvl the very first equation you get now this basic simplifications 4 into i1 minus 4 into i2 and whatever i1 i2 is common you have to add or subtract those or taking common of that like that whatever basic simplifications that you have to do if you do that also you will only get five marks because uh why i tell that is because you have to do kramer's rule at the end after doing all those things also you have to do kramer's rule at the end kramer's rule will be having some separate marks that is why I try to what i can say do the kramer's rule without fail if you have five marks for uh finding out all the equations kvl equations five marks will be for kramer's rule if you get uh, any question for 10 marks that too what i can say the mesh and nodal analysis for mesh and nodal analysis for finding out the equations you will be having five marks if you get any question for 10 marks five marks is for finding your equations using kvl and kcl applying kvl and kcl and uh, 
your uh, 10 marks what i uh, your 10 uh, the what i can say your uh, other five marks is for this uh, kramer's rule itself students this kramer's rule only you will be having for other five marks right i guess you understood things okay whatever you do at the end you have to do the kramer's rule for your evaluator only evaluator will be having kramer's rule uh, for what i can say has this one what i can say uh, the kramer's rule for uh, in the in his uh, scheme of valuation so that is why please do try to do kramer's rule without fail okay yeah. okay yes so now uh, what i supposed to do is start so now see i told all this for your benefit yeah you have to understand things in a clear manner right okay so now here this is what is you got the resultant and now let me come to this v1 so where is my v1 my v1 is the right okay still just a minute uh, okay um this is uh, yeah okay minus of minus uh, what i can say 0 0.22 okay uh, so here you can see how i have substituted on the calculator so just a minute i'm so sorry i guess it's not that clear okay so now we can see here how i substituted so see uh, this 0 0.1666 minus 0 0.1 i so this one i have taken in the bracket see here is one bracket and here is one bracket and what i did i took i took another bracket and i written in that bracket that is 0 point type 0 0.29110 minus 0 0.3095 i right i took both th things in the bracket and you also have to do the same here i have taken minus bracket of minus that is 0 0.2 i into minus 0 0.2 i that is i have taken it directly so i am taking the bracket see i have taken all the things directly so that is why i have taken a bracket if you don't take it directly if you are doing this separately and that particular thing separately then what i supposed to do you can take directly minus 0 0.2 i into minus 0 0.2 i in the calculator without having brackets fine if you are taking this separately and this particular thing separately and uh, subtracting that what is supposed to do is you can you need not to use the brackets here you can take directly minus 0 0.2 i into minus 0 0.2 i fine yes so now okay so if i come to v1 can you see just a minute So if you can see here, so V1 if you can see, just a minute, V1 if you can see, so this was like what, this was like, just a minute, I'll just push it, so see this was like this, right, this was like this, but for V1, but for V1 what I'm supposed to do is I'm going to what I can say, uh, replace this 0 0.1666 minus 0 0.1j and this 0 0.2j by this particular right for my v1 what i'm supposed to do i have to uh, replace the 0 0.1666 minus 0 0.1j and minus 0 0.2j by this particular by this particular thing that is this particular whole thing whatever is present in bracket i'm going to replace this by I am going to replace this particular thing by this particular, right? If I replace that, I am going to get it like this. See, I got it, right? See, I got it here and this and this will remain the same as per how it is there in the uh, this particular. What is that? Uh, what I have written here as per the, uh, how it is like that, it's the same, okay? And divided by this is delta. So, if you do this process, you get this resultant and you get this resultant which is 1.4830 plus 0.17607j. This particular thing you know how to solve. I told you, right? This into this, what I can say, minus this into this. This into this, you are going to multiply. Then you are going to take minus this into this. Fine. Then you get this resultant and this resultant you are going to divide by delta and you are going to get this resultant. Fine. Now coming on to V2, 
Now coming on to V2. So for my V2 what I am supposed to do is start in the place of this minus 0.2j and uh, 0.29110 minus 0.3095j. I am going to uh, replace the, with this particular. So this particular thing will be replaced by this. And this one what we have in the this particular um, <clears throat> what I can say matrix the same thing will remain the same. Okay. This particular will remain the same and this part got replaced by this particular whole thing. You can see here fine. And this divided by delta. If I divide this by delta. So this particular thing you know what. Right. You know this particular thing is what. That is this into this minus this into this. If I do that I am going to get this particular resultant I am going to get this particular resultant and then and then after this particular resultant if we divide it by delta so then I am going to get it as a minus students I am so sorry okay so this particular resultant so if I do that what's that going to happen is that you are going to get V2 as that is minus 1.030741 so minus 1.703929j right okay so I guess you can't see that just a minute I will push it down if you can see here. I guess you can see it over here. So it is minus 0 0.1030741 minus 0 0.703929J right here it is J written it as I please to oblige it is J okay. So this is what is for uh, today's complete session and please to understand the basics of Kramer's rule if you understand you can solve it but the new numbers are different fine numbers only vary but all the things are same try to understand and do it and this is what is I was able to tell you and thank you.